Question number 99 is an Arrhenius plot question where the first thing you need to do is calculate the activation barrier or activation energy and the frequency factor, the pre-exponential factor. To do that, you're going to have to plot the data that they have provided. The data that they have provided is simply the Kelvin temperature, well actually the Celsius temperature, and the rate constant. So if you take the rate constant values, plug them into an Excel file, similar to what I did here, take the Celsius temperature, add on 273, and get your Kelvin temperature, then to create the Arrhenius plot, you need to take the natural log of the rate constant and 1 over the Kelvin temperature. To take the natural log of the rate constant, you can just type in here equals ln and then reference the cell that you want it to calculate the natural log of. And for temperature, you could do equals 1 over and then reference the cell for which you want it to calculate the 1 over Kelvin temperature. Once you have your natural log of the rate constant and your 1 over the Kelvin temperature, you can highlight these two rows and insert a graph. When you insert your graph, you're going to want to look at some of the previous videos I did. Uh, you'll want to show, display the equation. Uh, first create a trend line and then show the equation of the line and the R squared value if you choose. The equation of the line is important so long as you prepared the plot correctly, you need to have on your x-axis 1 over the Kelvin temperature and on your y-axis the natural log of the rate constant. Then your slope is equal to negative Ea over R and your y-intercept is equal to the natural log of the exponential um, frequency factor. So we're now going to take these two numbers and calculate the activation energy and the frequency factor. So what we had was negative 10,759. That's equal to negative Ea over R. If we prepared the graph correctly, rearrangement gives us an Ea of 89,450 joules or 89.5 kilojoules. The natural log of A is going to be equal to the y-intercept, which is 26.769. Take the anti-natural log of both sides, or E to the, and we get an A of 4.22 times 10 to the 11. Then it asks us to determine the rate constant at 15 degrees Celsius. To do this, we'll use this form of the Arrhenius equation, natural log of the rate constant at one temperature over the rate constant at another temperature, this means you can choose whatever temperature you want from the data provided. I'm choosing 25 degrees Celsius, where the rate constant is 8.81 times 10 to the negative 5. This then will be equal to our Ea value in joules. Don't forget to make, uh, keep the units of joules, not kilojoules. Divided by R, which is 8.314, multiplied by 1 over the Kelvin temperature that corresponds to the denominator K value minus 1 over the Kelvin temperature that corresponds to the uh, first uh, rate constant uh, in the numerator. And this is the K value that we are attempting to determine at 15 degrees Celsius or 273 plus 15 in Kelvin. So using our log rules, natural log of K minus natural log of 8.81 times 10 to the negative 5 will be equal to this entire number over here, which we calculate to be negative 1.254. Then K1, natural log of K1, will be equal to negative 10.59 by adding natural log of 8.81 times 10 to the negative 5 to both sides. And K then, when we take the anti-natural log of both sides, is 2.52 times 10 to the negative 5. Then the last part, if the reaction has uh, given concentrations of reactants, what is the initial rate at 75 degrees Celsius? Well, darn it, they did it again. So now we have to calculate the rate constant at 75 degrees Celsius. We can do that the exact same way as we did it up here. We simply will put in 75 degrees Celsius instead of 15 degrees Celsius. 
but everything else is the same. You can choose any rate constant, which is corresponding temperature for the other two values. So we'll go through the whole thing again, and k ends up being 1.58 times 10 to the negative 2. Now make sure that this is making sense. Should we have a smaller rate constant at 15 degrees Celsius than we do at 75 degrees Celsius? Yes, the, re the reaction should go more slowly at lower temperatures. Now we can calculate the rate of the reaction with the concentrations that are, provi the are provided and the rate constant that we just calculated at 75 degrees Celsius. So rate will be equal to that rate constant multiplied by the concentration of each of these raised to their order. And the order of the reaction is first with respect to each reactant. How do we know that? Because it tells us that in the problem. So then we get a rate of 6.11 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second, 